oratory. It's your experience of beauty, it's your experience of, 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 of moral struggle, experience of human relationships, experience of, of love, of, of evil. All these go into trying uh, to see whether there is answer. I'm not saying there is answer, but it's just... You, I'd, I'd like you to acknowledge that there is a different kind of question which requires a different okay. kind of answer. I will, I will acknowledge that uh, science is not, at least at present, capable of providing a fully satisfactory explanation for feelings of love and beauty, the overwhelming feeling from reading a Shakespeare sonnet or something like that. I will ac accept that. What I will not accept is that religion provides any better an explanation than science does of that. These are mysterious things at present. They're um, mysteries which I at least believe science in principle can solve. Maybe it won't ever in practice solve, but in principle. You do not add anything to your understanding of a love of beauty or happiness or, or just plain love by injecting a supernatural creator. That doesn't help. We've still got a mystery. We've still got a mystery that we're working on and it's very difficult. But I think, you know, with due respect, you, uh, you're, you're not facing the issue that, that there are certain uh, kinds of questions which can only be answered or, ad or, or addressed in terms of whether there is a purpose or, or not a purpose. If I reach forward now and take that glass of water and somebody says, what happened? You get a description of what you happened. If you say, well, why does he reach forward to take that glass of water? The answer, presumably, is a personal answer. I, I, was, I, I was thirsty or I, chose, I, or I chose to do it. This is a, a different question which requires a different kind of... Uh, well, of, it, of, of, of answer. It, it is a different question, but I'm really surprised that you think it needs a religious answer because... Um, well, let me, if I may, p point to your own writings. Um, I think, if I might say so, the bits of the God delusion that are particularly helpful are when you write about morality. Now, uh, what I gain from this is that although you think uh, a capacity for uh, moral choice or moral discriminant is in some sense built in, into us, uh, we're not... Uh, tied down by simply what nature has given us because our moral sense becomes, as it were, inculturated. It takes cultural form uh, through poetry, through the choices we, we make. Now, this seems to me to indicate uh, that you're concerned uh, about culture and human purpose and not just what the evolutionary purpose, uh, per process has yes, given us. Yes, I mean, I, of course I am. And, and if, you're allow, if you're willing to do that in principle about morality, why wouldn't you in principle uh, allow it to do, do it for, with the possibility of a spiritual, an ultimate spiritual meaning to life? I'm not arguing there is, just to, to hold open the possibility that it might be there. It's a legitimate question. If by spiritual you mean poetic, artistic... Um, subjective, all those things I accept and regard as manifestations of brain activity which we don't yet understand. If by purpose you say you, you mean some kind of ultimate purpose, what is the ultimate purpose of the universe, I don't think it's a legitimate question. I mean, it, it, it seems to me that we are beings who have been conditioned throughout our lives to ask purpose type questions. It's easy to say my purpose in reaching for a glass of water is I want to drink. I mean, that's, that's pure brain stuff. That's, that, that's not a problem. If you say, what is the purpose of the universe? What is the, the ultimate purpose of, of, of the world? Then I, I would simply say that's not a legitimate question. It's not a question that, that deserves an answer. But it seems to me that uh, a logical consequence of the view you're taking uh, is that this very com conversation which we're having together, as it were, has been built into the natural process, where for me it is a discussion about the possibility of, of truth or different kinds of truth. It's not just been built into us by, by, by nature. It's not uh, predetermined and pre-selected. Uh, there, there, are, there are possibilities open of, of moving forward or mo moving somewhere somewhere well, I think new. We're just saying that humans are very complicated and, and um, we have complicated conversations and social relations and culture and, and um, that doesn't mean that, that ultimately there's not a scientific explanation. It may be one that we'll, we'll never but get. But can I point also to your uh, um, search for scientific truth and, and particularly Darwin. I mean Darwin was a very good person. We, we certainly agreed on that. Man of enormous integrity, painstaking in the research he did, driven 
by the desire to get at the truth of things. And so, uh, so, are, so are you. Now, this is much more than simply that something has been built into our bodies. It's more than simply activity going on in the brain. It's, it, it's something else altogether. Well, how do you know? Well, let me ask you whether you, your desire for truth, is, it's, it's obviously important to you. And I'm sure you wouldn't want to think of it simply in terms of grain activity. Of course, there is activity going on. I think I would. Um, hmm? I, I, you would? Um, <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> I mean, I can't think what else it would be. I mean, it, that doesn't make right. it any well, less... Well, it, of course, it's activity going on in the, in, in the brain, but um, when you go into, it, in, into the lab, you don't think just, well, there's a lot of funny activity going on in my brain today. You're actually uh, trying to... No, you, know, you don't to, think to, to, to that, of course. No, no, that. no. You're totally involved in what you're trying to of do. Of course, and, and similarly, when you, when you fall in love, when you listen to, to music, you don't think, oh, think of all those neurons firing away. I mean, no. you, you know, we, we are human. But that doesn't mean that if, if we're challenged to say, does the existence of a love of poetry and music and, and, and other people imply some kind of supernatural? No, it doesn't. Well, I think we can have to differ there. Do you think we ought to let somebody <laughs> Okay, let's else, have some let, questions let from Thursday. Um, well, you, you, go on. You have to speak up a bit. Yeah. I think we are missing the point in this discussion because it's about Darwinism and we don't come out of here knowing anything more than we knew when we entered into this debate. <laughs> Okay. I think that's for Because Richard. I know that there are critic, very critical views that say that in his words, he really was wrong. Richard? Uh, Darwin um, didn't invent evolution, obviously, that's an old idea. He didn't even invent nat natural selection. There were other people who thought of natural selection. What I think that Darwin, and actually Wallace as well, did was to recognize that natural selection is, a, is the powerful driving force which pushes evolution in the direction of adaptation, in the direction of improvement, in the direction of beauty, and, and uh, everything that creates an illusion of design. So there were others who, who had, the, had the sort of essential ideas, but Darwin and Wallace were the only people who saw the significance of it and realized that it was the answer to the great riddle of the existence of life. And when you say there are, there are severe critics of Darwin, um, I don't, obviously Darwin got some things wrong because you know, he lived a, a, a century and a half ago. Um, but um, I don't know of any serious critics who will say... Well, the system is gradual insofar as, it, as anything that matters. There is a certain amount of controversy about whether um, it's a so-called theory of evolution by jerks, whether... Um, <laughs> whether um, evolution goes in abrupt steps sometimes. Um, there is a certain amount of evidence in the fossil record that, that this can happen, but it's not a big deal. It doesn't detract from the fundamental point that evolution is gradual insofar as it explains the origin of complex uh, app apparent design. Okay, let's have another question. Yes, you, you sir. Uh, Professor Dawkins has held up the prospect that things like the experience of music or the experience of love might be explained by science. But it seems to me, when, when you accepted that the ultimate question of what's the ultimate purpose of any of these things is a bad question, one we ought not to ask, that leaves us as humans in a rather uncomfortable position. Because as, you, as your work has shown, we can give an account of how there's this special thing that humans can do, which is to think about our purposes and decide which purposes to have and which purposes not to have. And we often do that by pushing the purposes further and further back. But if, if 
the scientific story, the lesson of 